Hey, Rob Black from and today we're going to be going through your very first continuous integration pipeline. But like anything, we, where we start, we're going to start with some source code. So here I actually have an application, a pretty easy Node.js application uh, that's actually Dockerized. And so if we actually run some Docker commands, uh, we can build this application. Also, this application is actually on GitHub, and so this will actually come back and help us in a little bit. But let's go ahead and just go ahead and build this locally. And go ahead and execute a Docker command. Now, on my machine, I actually have npm and Docker, so let's go ahead and just run that build real quick. And this might take a few moments to complete. And once we do that, we can actually push this particular image that we have all the way back to Docker Hub. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And this might take a few moments. And we can see here, our, actually, our build just got pushed. Now, with continuous integration, the purpose of CI is actually externalizing all these steps. Now, to get this to actually work on my machine here, uh, I actually had to install a few things, which was required from the Docker install here or the Docker build. But how do we go about externalizing this? So let's get ahead and get started with Harness Continuous Integration. Coming to the Harness homepage at Harness.io, you can actually click on Get Started, and you can actually sign up. I actually have an account, so let me switch over to it. So when you want to get started with the continuous integration, the first thing you're brought to is actually this build module and the getting started guide. Harness actually runs on the concept of something called delegates. These delegates are worker nodes that act on your behalf. And those worker nodes can actually provision necessary resources. Let's go ahead and actually create one right now. So if you come to home, come to the project, and actually by default, a project is set for you by default. Go ahead and click into it. Come to project setup, click on delegates, and let's actually go ahead and create a new Harness Delegate. So click on Create Delegate. We're going to be running one on Kubernetes. And go ahead and click Continue. We're going to make this one kind of small. And let's go ahead and call this one Minikube. Now let's go ahead and get a Minikube instance stood up. And then we're going to actually install the Delegate into it. So let's go ahead and configure our Minikube to have 8 gigabytes. And let's go ahead and start Minikube. This might take a few moments depending on your machine. So we can go ahead and just wait for a couple minutes. You can hear my machine whirring in the background. It's quick at work to make this mini cube cluster. Looks like our cluster just came up, and we can run a simple command. Kubectl get pods to gay, just to double check that our cluster is up and running. It looks like all the necessary things are up and running. Coming back to the harness delegate setup, now we can give a few commands here or properties. We're gonna go ahead and make a small delegate and give the delegate cluster wide access to our machine here or our mini cube instance. Go ahead and click continue. The YAML is going to be generated for us. We can go ahead and down download that YAML. <clears throat> Once downloaded, you can apply it. And this might take a few moments uh, to be created. Come back in the UI, go ahead and click continue. And then when the delegate comes up, the heartbeat should be there and you should get the green light that the delegate's installed. And the green checkbox means our delegate is ready to rock. So let's go ahead and start our very first pipeline now. So coming back to builds, Click on their default project and getting started. And Harness will actually set up a few pieces of infrastructure for us. And so once it's provisioned, we can actually start walking through the wizard. So our particular application is here in GitHub. Um, I actually have a GitHub token set up for this. Uh, if you don't have one, you can come to your preferences, come to settings, you come down to developer settings, and then come on personal access, personal access tokens and create one. I have one called Harness CI that I will actually wire back into the particular pipeline. So we're gonna be coming from GitHub, access token, go ahead and paste in my access token, click test connection, go and save. Looks like everything is great. We're gonna go ahead and actually come to the repository and the repository that represents the source code we do have is actually called node docker. And we're gonna grab that, click create pipeline. And this is gonna be starting to create our pipeline so now we have a few things that we need to do here. Our build step is configured, but we need to fill out a few things, such as where we're gonna run it and how we're gonna run it. So the first thing is let's set up some infrastructure. We can by clicking continue. Uh, we're actually gonna be running this on our Kubernetes cluster that we just have, or actually our Minikube cluster. So we're gonna hit change, Kubernetes, and we're actually gonna wire in our Kubernetes cluster now. And we're gonna make a new connector. I'm gonna make one call my first CI node which is a distributed build node for us. Let's click continue. Uh, the great thing about using a harness delegate is that it actually can facilitate work on your cluster. So we're gonna go ahead and use a specific harness delegate. And we're gonna use one called Minikube, the one we just spun up here. Go ahead and click save and continue. And there'll be a connectivity test, which might take a few moments. 
and it looks like the validation has been successful. So let's go ahead and continue on. And so a few things we want to select. Go ahead and select. We want a Linux uh, OS to be the base image for the build here, uh, which is fine. I'm using Windows subsystem for Linux, which is perfectly fine. Uh, go ahead and click continue. Oh, actually, we need to make a namespace. I'll just go ahead and build that in the default namespace here. So go ahead and click continue. And that's pretty much it. We can actually add a new step now uh, for after we have the build, we'll build by convention. And so we actually want to add another stage uh, to publish the artifact. So let's go ahead and add a stage. We're going to add a particular build stage again. We're going to call this one push. We're going to click sub stage. So we're going to come into push and take a look at a few things. So we're going to actually inherit the uh, infrastructure from our last stage. So we're going to enter that information again. Go ahead and click continue. Now right, we're going to add a particular step here. We're going to click on add a step. And we're going to be actually pushing to a Docker registry. You can recall this Docker push. Uh, we do need to set up a Docker connector. So let's go ahead and make a new one. Let's make a new connector. This is called this Docker hub. Go ahead and click continue. Uh, we're going to be using the Docker hub URL, which is it's actually right here. So we can just copy and paste that. And go ahead and give your credentials, which uh, is my username. And then you can create a particular secret. I made one here called Docker Hub Password. Go ahead and use that. Apply selected. Click continue. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and run this still on our mini cube delegate here. And this is going to validate our particular credentials. It looks like that has been successful. Click finish. Uh, my particular repository uh, is hard latch and sample JS. If we come back to Docker Hub, uh, we can see that. Uh, we can add a particular tag, so let's just call this CI video example. And go ahead and click apply changes. And go ahead and save that. And now we're ready to run this thing. So let's come back to pipelines. Let's come back and click run. Uh, we want to make a specific branch here, so if we come back to the particular application here. Uh, I only have one branch called main. Let's go ahead and just run it on the main branch. And let's go ahead and run the pipeline. So let's take a few moments. And after a few moments, our particular pipeline is complete, which is fantastic. So I hope that was interesting for you. Uh, there's lots to do kind of getting into continuous integration. I mean, once you have these particular pieces here, are all set up that you can actually quickly reassemble them if you want to do something or if you want to run particular tests uh, by setting up actually uh, harness test intelligence. But until next time, cheers, Robbie.